Everyone, it is the start of the month, and you know what that all means. It means incredible resources from fantastic developers. Hey everyone, I hope you're well, playing on making the games that you all love. You're joining me, your host, professional level designer, Max Bears. Absolute pleasure to have you listening to me. And that be morning, evening, or night, regardless where you're listening. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me, and I hope that your family are all okay and safe. Now, that sounded extra threatening when I didn't mean, <laughs> mean it to, but the, uh, the start of the month, for those who are new, or those of you who don't listen to the start of the month, this is a time where I go through some incredible resources that I have come across, saw, listened to, read, and really want to share them with you because after all i do not know everything and the more we learn is means the more that we grow so i'll be recommending five i believe incredible resources for you to go check out before you do this though please do subscribe to the channel whether that be on podcasting through that of spotify apple podcast google podcast wherever you get the podcast please do subscribe helps us a lot so we do appreciate that now, with all the uh, housekeeping out of the way, let's actually get to the very first resource. But first, let's have a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is none other than me. What I've done, everyone, and I hope you're excited for this, is I've actually created a level design kind of store. What I've done in this store is put up different kinds of tips and tricks that you can find there, whether that be my actual ebook itself to that of level design pamphlets focused on different things such as traversal, stealth, breaking into the industry, as well as different talks that I have done which you cannot find anywhere else other than on this store. So if you are looking to improve on your level design skills, and processes then check out the level design store which will be down in the description below where there'll be a link to find this all you need to do is head over to gumroad.com forward slash level design lobby i hope you like what you see and i look forward to hearing your thoughts thank you and now back to the show so the first one's going to be a bit more technical than uh normal we normally talk about theory and design principles but this one's going to actually be that, with it being taking place in the start of GDC, we we're going through the first one, which is the actual Epic's GDC presentation, which has kindly been available uh, for us all to, to check out. And uh, wow, it's got, for some reason, I'm just looking at the YouTube tag. It's got uh, World of Warcraft as its YouTube tag. Uh, very strange. But the <laughs> it's, a, it's a great one because to, to me, I watched it because uh, it's just recently wrapped up, but I watched it when I was going through and there's a lot to learn here and a great thing that they're, they're doing now. Two of the big takeaways for me is one file per actor and level instances. You had a bit of that already in 5.1, if I'm correct, or just 5 in general, possibly. But it's relatively new, but they're taking a much deeper dive into this. And this here is hopefully going to help basically allow us to work on levels as overall teams and not getting in each other's way checking out files, right? Previously, before you did that, you'd use sub-levels for Unreal. And I think Unreal's really been lacking. I don't necessarily... I've only started to play around with it, but I'm not a huge fan of the, the folder structure as of yet that I have seen. But I'm hoping with time that it'll be a little bit easier but for a long time, uh, I'm sh it's not just me. I know many other devs have felt that why is it that the structuring of making a level is just awful? You've got to create folders, but you can never select a folder for then dragging in elements. So you, you know, your entire details panel or object uh, object panel is just littered. It's very hard to organize, and you have to organize it retroactively. It's not particularly good. So I think this is their take on that of prefabs that you've seen. Now, I know you can use blueprints as well for that, but again, it kind of sucks if you're just making blueprints for just 
art assets versus its intended purposes to have scripts and elements there really for it. So that's kind of where level instancing is going to come in and take place. But it was the few of the things that really caught my eye because they mentioned that, as I said, it's already been done before, but they're, they're building on it, is that of the uh, being able to move aspects and it procedurally generating different paths around it. They give the example of you're in a jungle and there's kind of this island that's on the side. You can move it to the middle and then a path on the right will then open up and essentially where you place it, it will then generate a connection between that and your previous one, which is it feels so cool and almost too good to be true in a sense. So I've, I've, I've not seen anything of it other than a, that example, but it sounds super exciting. And then the final aspect, which I really liked from it, was their uh, kind of, it's almost like their modding kit for Fortnite. And I feel like calling it a modding kit is kind of like downplaying the power of this, this, this element. Um, but I don't know how other way to refer to it, because it's kind of like unreal but i think more simplified for for others it seems very much that epic are really trying to charge into this whole metaverse element and the only way that or one of the better ways to do this is by having content built by the community so they even mentioned the stuff you build on there can then actually be bought by others online and then you can use that to start making your own income so yeah, I'm not too sure where that goes. He talks about other companies getting involved, but I'm not particularly interested in Metaverse just generally. Uh, but nonetheless, it's an interesting facet of their design and their kind of direction they're moving forward in. So yeah, some good things to see, some things that are more about questions and where we go. But uh, yeah, overall good to, good to see which direction they're heading in. Now the second one, is an article on Game Developer, and it's uh, on a game called Mexico 1921, A Deep Slumber. And the, the detail of this is really focusing on that of the fact that you're a photographer and photography really being a key part of the game and making that an engaging mechanic in its own right. And the game is not out yet, but it has been touted as a very fascinating game. I believe it's made it into the selection of London Games Festival 2023. I don't know what that is. But I think that's amazing, whatever that is. It's getting information and reading the article, them talking about making that not only engaging, but also a truth to the time period. Like a crazy stat to me uh, shows, again, their incredible research on this is that of, uh, I believe they said during that time period, the vast majority of uh, Mexicans were illiterate. So that's why photojournalism was such an important part and for them trying to deliver a narrative that was actually contextually true is uh, again another great one to see in photography we've seen in beyond uh, beyond good and evil and i've seen it in, in other indie games as well but this one looks really fascinating uh, as it's really focusing on that of the the old cameras itself right that of how how you interact with them actual aspects by looking at the f-stop as well and different types of uh, your what's it, lens range these sort of things and yeah i mean a very different approach that is exciting to see and just hearing about what, what inspired this and how they're being true to that so for me i'm fascinated to see where they go with this one so really cool stuff here to, to see for that going on to number three Friend of the show, Evan, is uh, now had one of his talks released by GDC, which is designing the museum flashback, Last of Us Part 2. For those of you who know, Evan was on the show, I think, God, I'm trying to think how long ago it was now. I want to say like a year ago. I feel like maybe two now. And he was the uh, designer behind the famous level in Last of Us 2, which is the flashback in that of Last of Us Part 2. So he goes about how he went about designing it, what it was that felt fascinating to, to him, the inspirations behind it. We'd spoken about uh, one of the, it was the director of uh, Silent Voice. Oh man, why am I forgetting the name of it? It is uh, something Bluebird. Uh, God, I feel really bad. But him talking about that and how that was an inspiration in an anime film into this, this level itself. And again, drawing inspiration from different parts of different mediums and being able to actually use them to influence 
and impact his design process there. Again, it's another good one. He's done another talk on pacing, which has also been released, but this is one I thought would be a bit more interesting simply because I know a lot of people will have played this level and again, just hearing his thoughts in terms of that for it. So yeah, definitely one to check out. Number four is, is quite a fascinating one for me, and this comes from uh, Thomas Brush. For those of you who don't know, he's an indie developer. He worked on that of Pinstripe and, sorry, I have seen his, that's it, his second game is called Never Song. I've played a bit of Pinstripe, but I didn't play the, the second game. But he talks about in his video, which a little bit of a clickbait title, which is 23 is going to be a rough year for game developers. And really he's talking about the news of AI and how that's going to impact us as developers. For those of you who may have missed it, there was a, a big kind of controversy just before GDC, I believe, where Ubisoft, Ubisoft shared one of their new tools, well, new to us, shall we say, I don't know how long it was, in that of uh, writing, where essentially, instead of the writers creating box, it has it where you put down what type of AI you have, I believe kind of uh, their mood or their temperament, and the AI will generate the box for that. I'm sure it's a bit more complex than I said, but it's a fascinating tool, a great way to save time, but it obviously did open the kind of worms of, well, how uh, how is this gonna impact us? And he goes through a few different tools that he's seen out there and kind of the importance he believes they will play moving forward and why it's kind of important for us to kind of learn about them now. My take on AI is I still don't know much. I mean, personally, I don't really want anything <laughs> to do with it. I think we've all seen enough sci-fi films to uh, know how bad this will go. But the, the thing with the tools is I definitely think the Ubisoft tool is a great tool for writers. I'm just going to tell you now the amount of narrative designers I have spoken to who really hate barks is pretty much all of them. So being able to do this to save them time is really only going to benefit them. I definitely have the concerns. Now in personal level, and we used it a bit on uh, Hellblades as well, was that was AI voice generators. We did this so we could quickly be able to get that of elements to prototype, right? Now, we were able to get voices to read scripts versus us having to act out. There's definitely some prototypes I hope to be able to share one day where it's me vo voice acting uh, certain aspects and characters. But I actually have gone off and used this for my God of War level as well, where I'm sure I'll be showing it at some point soon. But I have Zeus as a big character, but my voice I don't feel is as booming, deep, and intimidating as quite like that of what I imagine Zeus, but I've got an AI generator, which I type in the, the script that I need that will deliver the lines. It saves me time recording. I don't necessarily feel so self-conscious, and it allows me to get that in. Now, I know it's not going to be the best lines, but for my personal work and also for, again, iterating and creating that, it really does work and allow you to make something very quick for that. And yeah, he brings up some great points of it's important to learn these tools now because they will impact us moving forward. I don't disagree. I personally don't like the AI, excuse me, art out there because essentially it's just taking that of art that's online from actual creators and essentially stealing styles, really. There's no other way to, to put it and probably work as well. And I'm sure the people that made it would say otherwise, but it's it really is impactful and I don't actually know how yeah, how I want that moving forward. But there are tools that are useful and I don't think that they will be ignored and whether they will come steal our jobs. Dick 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 dear I don't know. But it's important to get ahead of it and learn a bit about them now in their infancy. Because the more you know now, the more it's going to help you move forward. Think about Microsoft Word when that came out. It used to be a skill to actually know these tools. Now, everyone's taught them at such a young age, right? So yeah, that's uh, one of those ones. Uh, we'll go to the final one. At Lover Design Lobby, we believe everybody has a story to tell. Hobbyist or student, freelancer or veteran, 
we made it our mission to unite those who share our passion for creating and developing great games. Thanks to our generous Patreon backers, we've been able to do just that. So if you've already pledged your support, thank you. If not, you too can ensure the future of Level Design Lobby, helping us to create even more exciting content, collaborations, interviews, and much more. With awesome perks and rewards, whether you're a seasoned professional or just getting started, you're sure to find something for you. Want to share tips, tricks, and advice with passionate, like-minded developers? Our awesome community Discord has you covered. Fancy practicing your level design, creating strong portfolio content, and having fun? Then try our level design weekends. Or perhaps you want to individually discuss your work, hone your skills, or level up your career? Then consider our one-on-one -on -one mentorships. If you share our vision, then go to patreon.com forward slash level design lobby for more information and to pledge your support. Thank you. Which is called uh, Stop Getting Lost, Make Cognitive Maps, Not Levels, which is a, a GDC talk that took place back in 2021, uh, where Nicholas, I'm sorry, I'm going to mispronounce your name, Nicholas, Weijin uh, talks about how that he has used and how to use that of uh, urbanism in order to, which is like uh, urban design, to help design levels to make sure players are able to create mental maps and stop themselves from getting lost. I have done a talk on a similar subject, so that's why it was really appealing to me because there's still so much that I don't feel that I know and incredible people out there. So to hear his kind of words is quite fascinating. The stuff he touched on about boundaries, which I didn't, and I thought, again, another great aspect for us to, to learn from. So if you feel that your levels are very much causing players to get lost, I think this is a great talk for you. So I really would recommend going through it. And to me, it is really important with levels only getting bigger. We mentioned that at the start about Epic, right? And them making Fortnite. You definitely want these levels to allow players to learn them, grow them so they can master them moving uh, forward. So we'll go for, through a recap of the, the five resources we have. So the very first one is the State of Unreal, coming from GDC 2023. The second one is Photography as a Narrative in the New York Coming Game, Mexico 1921. Then we want to go to the talk by Evan, Design the Museum Flashback, Last of Us Part 2. The fourth one is that of AI and how it's going to impact the process for us. And the final one is Stop Getting Lost. So if you do like them, please go check out as they'll all be in the link in the description down below. Thank you very much. If you do want to share some great articles with me and the community, you can do so by tweeting at me at Max Pants. Email into the show at leveldesignlobby at gmail.com. And please do support the show over on Patreon as well. Thank you so much. Have a great time. I'll catch you all next time. Thank you.